Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to look into multiprocessor systems. And in multiprocessor system, there is a problem associated with it that is known as cache coherence problem. And as a solution to this problem, we propose cache coherency protocols. So in today's session, we are first going to state the cache coherence problem and then we will look into the solution that is cache coherency protocols. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now I hope you all remember the basic structure of a dual core processor which we observed in the session where we were introduced to the cache memory. Now we all know that a processor is connected to the main memory with the help of a system bus. So with respect to these cores, if you observe closely, the L1 and L2 caches for each of the cores are their private storages, whereas the L3 cache and the main memory are the shared storages. So basically, in a multiprocessor system, every core has its own independent memory storage. Also, there are some memory storages which are shared among all of them. Now let's dig a little bit deeper, shall we? Consider this organization where we have four different processors, namely P1, P2, P3, and P4. And all these processors, they have their own private caches. Now, for the sake of simplification, we are considering all of the processors have only one single private cache. Now, as the shared storage, we are considering the main memory, which is connected with this organization with the help of the system bus. Additionally, all the different private caches, they are interconnected with the help of the internal bus. Now suppose inside the main memory, we have a program code which has a global variable A and that has been initialized to 7. Now consider a situation where this entire organization will work as an MISD that is multiple instruction stream and single data stream organization. That means all these different processors will operate on the same data that is A. Now suppose the processor P1 wants to perform the operation A plus 1. That means it wants to increment the value of A by 1. Now in order to do so, it will first go ahead and look for the value of A inside its own private cache. However, since it is the very first access to A, it will result in a compulsory mess. Meaning P1 doesn't have the value of A inside its own private cache yet. Therefore, it will go to the next level of the memory hierarchy that is the main memory and bring the value of A from there inside its own private cache. Now once we have the value of A inside P1's own private cache, now P1 can go ahead and perform the operation it wanted to perform. That means now P1 will increment the value of A by 1, making A as 8. Now suppose P2 wants to perform the operation A plus 2. That means it wants to increment the value of A by 2. However, since P2 doesn't have the value of A present inside its own private cache yet, Therefore, it will go ahead and bring the value of A from the main memory into its own private cache. Now, once we have the value of A present inside P2's own private cache, P2 can now go ahead and perform the operation it wanted to perform. That means, now it can increment the value of A by 2, making A as 9. Similarly, suppose P3 wants to decrement the value of A by 1, Therefore, it will go ahead and look for the value inside the main memory and bring the value of A from there into its own private cache. And once it has the value of A inside its own private cache, now it can decrement the value of A by 1, making it 6. And finally, suppose P4 wants to decrement the value of A by 2, it will follow the same drill. That means it will bring the value of A from the main memory inside its own private cache. And once it has done so, it can now go ahead and update the value of A as 5. Now if you observe carefully, the same variable A has different values in different private caches. Now this is inconsistency. And this particular inconsistent view is referred to as cache coherence problem. So basically, what is cache coherence? It is the uniformity of shared resource data that ends up stored in multiple local caches. That means, we need to maintain the uniformity and that is exactly cache coherence. Now coming to cache coherence problem, it is the challenge of keeping multiple local caches synchronized when one of the processors updates its local copy of data which is shared among multiple caches. That basically means if we have a shared value in multiple different private caches, 
they need to be synchronized and the challenge is to keep them synchronized and that is basically cache coherence problem. Now as a solution to this cache coherence problem, we are going to propose some cache coherency protocols that is we will be setting some ground rules so that we can achieve coherency among all the private caches. Now before getting directly to the protocols, let's talk about some associated terminologies. Now since we are dealing with the caches, we already know every cache is logically subdivided into lines or blocks. Now in order to ensure the coherency, we maintain some information within the cache controller. And what is the information that we maintain? For every cache block, we specify some states. Now one of the states is modified. So when we specify that a particular line is in modified state, it means that the particular line contains data modified by its own processor and thus is inconsistent with the main memory. Now coming to the next state that is shared state. So when we specify that a particular line is in shared state, it means that the line contains unmodified data and thus can appear in at least one of the CPU's caches. Always remember, a memory block can appear in multiple CPU caches only if it is in shared state. Now the next state is invalid. It means that the line's data has been invalidated because some other processor wrote to their cache updating the value which was also shared by this particular line. So basically, when for the very first time we fetch some data from the main memory to our own private cache, the state of that particular cache line is set to shared. Now if our processor decides to update that particular line's content, in that case, the state of that particular line will be promoted from shared to modified. However, if some other processor which was operating on the same data modifies their content prior to our processor, in that case, in order to ensure the coherency, the state of that particular line inside our own cache will be demoted from shared to invalid. Now apart from these three, we can specify some other states for a particular cache line, namely exclusive, owned and forward. Now the state exclusive means that the cache line is present only in the current cache and it matches the main memory. That means it may be changed to shared state at any time in response to a read request from any other processors. Now if the state of a particular cache line is specified as owned, it means that the cache is the sole owner of that content and will be responsible for satisfying the read requests by all the other processors. Now coming to the forward state, it is a specialized form of the shared state. For an instance, if a memory block is shared by multiple caches and one of them is in the forward state, in that case, if the memory block somehow gets updated, the cache with the forward state will be responsible for forwarding the updation to all the other caches. So these are the states which can be specified for a particular cache line depending upon the protocol that we are following. Now let's get into the different cache coherency protocols. Now to be really honest, as a solution to the cache coherence problem, there exist software based cache coherence schemes which rely solely on the compiler and the operating system. Basically, compiler based coherence mechanisms perform analysis on the codes to determine which data items may become unsafe for caching. The operating system then prevents those data items from being cached during runtime. Nonetheless, these are called cache coherence schemes, not protocols. The hardware based solutions are generally referred to as cache coherency protocols. And since we are in the COA course, we will mainly focus on the hardware based solutions. Additionally, the cache coherence protocols demonstrate improved performance over the cache coherence schemes. Now there are two types of cache coherency protocols. The first one is called snooping or buzzed based protocol. Now as the name suggests, here cache management is done by snooping on the bus at all times. That means whenever any processor generates a broadcast request over the shared bus, all the other cache controllers will snoop on the bus and accordingly manage their own caches. Now primarily there are two approaches of snooping based protocol. The first one is called write update and the second one is called write invalidate. Now in write update approach, if certain cache line gets promoted from shared to modified state, in that scenario, all the other caches which were sharing the same content will be updated parallelly. Whereas in case of write invalidate, in such scenario, all the other caches sharing the content will invalidate their own copies. Now during our session of overview of cache design, 
we came across different write strategies. So each of these two approaches can be further subdivided into two more categories based on the write strategy they implement. That means the write update can be implemented either using the write through strategy or the write back strategy. And the same can be said for write invalidate as well. So to sum it up, there are four approaches of the snooping based protocol write update write through, write update write back, write invalidate write through, and write invalidate write back. Now the next type of cache coherency protocol is called directory based protocol. Here a centralized directory is maintained to keep track of the data items. Along with that for every processor private directories are also maintained which help in achieving coherency. The main difference between the snooping and the directory based protocol is in snooping or snoop based protocol, broadcast messages are used and the caches are connected through the bus. Whereas in directory based protocol, the nodes are connected using a scalable interconnection network implementing point to point communication. So these are the basic underlying concepts of these two protocols. Do always remember that the cache coherency protocols are the hardware based solution to the cache coherence problem. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concept of cache coherence problem and the basic ideology behind cache coherency protocols are clear to you now. In the upcoming session, we will be discussing about snooping based protocol in greater details. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.